Hello, I'm the Everyday Hacker. In this video, I will be showing you how to create a Tor router on a Raspberry Pi. However, please note that this is an educational video only and I do not condone anyone using this information for any harmful purposes. While Tor routers can be useful for protecting privacy and anonymity, they can also be used for illegal activities such as accessing dark web sites or hiding one's location while committing cyber crimes. So please be sure to use this knowledge responsibly and ethically. All right, so this is a Raspberry Pi 4. This is a single board computer that has all the ports of a regular computer and it runs something called Raspbian. Raspbian is a form of Linux or a Linux distro. It's got the two HDMI ports right there. It's got a USB-C port. It's got two USB regular ports and, and two re uh, USB 3.0 ports and a network jack right there. And this can also connect to Wi-Fi. So in this video, we're gonna turn this Raspberry Pi 4 into a Tor browser that can access the dark web. So there's only a few things that can access the dark web and a Tor browser is one of them. All right, guys, so this is the Raspberry Pi desktop. Now I skipped a few things before we got to here. I skipped a part where I created a username and password and I skipped a part where I connected to the Wi-Fi. So make sure you guys are connected to your Wi-Fi and uh, make sure you're in a network. So I'm connected to my Wi-Fi, so we can move on to the next step. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is on the top left corner here, we're gonna click on this Raspberry Pi icon, scroll all the way down to preferences, scroll all the way down to Raspberry Pi configuration. In the middle here where it says interfaces, make sure your SSH is enabled. To, if it's uh, to the left, make sure you move it to the right here and then click on OK. Now, the reason we want SSH enabled is because we're going to remotely access our Raspberry Pi using PuTTY. On the top left, we're going to click on the terminal. Now we're going to type in if config to find our IP address. So if config, then hit enter. That's going to give us our that's going to give us our Pi's IP address. If you're connected to, to uh, the VLAN or the wireless network, your your IP address is going to be this part here where it says WLAN zero. My, my IP address for my Pi is 192.168.1.152. Yours is probably going to be something different. So just memorize yours. Now we can install PuTTY on our Windows PC. All right, guys. So this is PuTTY right here. Pretty simple to install. All you do is go to Google, type in PuTTY, download. Then once once you're done, you should see something like this. Where it says host name or IP address, we're going to type in our Raspberry Pi's IP address. Mine is 192.168.1.152. Yours is going to be different. Then uh, yes, then click on yes. So now we have to type in our username and password. My username is Pi, and my password is the, the default one, Raspberry. Yours is gonna be different. So now we remotely accessed our Raspberry Pi. So now we're in the terminal. Now we're gonna do most of this stuff on our Windows side because our Windows side is a lot easier to work with. Then we're gonna do a few other things in our graphical user interface for our Raspberry Pi later on. Now. One thing that I created, I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description and let me adjust this so you can see this a lot better. I'm gonna put the terminal there. I'm gonna put this URL here. So I created a text document with all the instructions needed to finish this, to get this to work. But uh, you guys don't have to like type everything in. So you could just copy and paste like I'm about to do. So under step one, we're gonna copy this code here, sudo app get install tour. We're not gonna copy the quotations by the way everything but the quotations, we're gonna hit enter. So this is gonna install the Tor browser. We're gonna type in Y for yes and hit enter. Let it do its thing. All right, when, once that's done, we're gonna move on to step two. Step two, we're gonna copy this code. We're gonna edit a file using nano. So sudo nano etc slash tor slash t-o-r. T -O -R. So we're gonna copy this line of code here on the second option. This is gonna allow us to edit a Tor file. And we're going to make a few changes, hit enter. This should pop out. What I'm going to do is uh, for this terminal, I'm going to drag it down so it's a lot easier. So under step three, we're going to un uncomment this line here where it says hidden service directory. And then the one that says hidden service port 80, we're going to uncomment those. So we're going to look for those. I'm going to scroll down here and we're going to find those and then uncomment those. All right, so I found them. They're right here. See these two that says hidden service directory and hidden port. See where you have the comment here? Or the, uh, or the hashtag, delete that, and hit space. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. I hit when I hit space again. So now we uncommented this line of code here. Now we, all we have to do is hold control, click on X. When it's prompt, type in Y, then enter to save that file. Now we can move on to the next step. So the next step is uh, actually step five here. We're gonna copy this line of code to stop our 
to our services. Then we're going to start them again. I'm going to copy that line of code. Then I'm going to... Uh, then the next line of code is to start it. So I'm, sorry, I'm going to copy that same line of code, but just change the stop to start. Then hit enter. So now we're starting to our services. So now we're gonna check the status of our services and that's number six here. So we're gonna copy this line of code here to check the status of our services. We're gonna paste it, we're gonna hit enter. Now, if everything's working well under active here, uh, we have an active with green writing right next to it. If we see the green writing and it says active, that means it's working. So now all we have to do is hold control type Z, right? And we're gonna restart our services again. So gonna make sure we go back to where it says uh, services start again to start the services so our services started again now we're gonna move on to the next step the next step is to get our Tor IP address so this is th this line of code here it's gonna allow us to do that paste it here that's number seven hit enter if you got this string with a dot on yet at the end that means it's working so copy yours I'm gonna copy mine make sure you paste it in a secure area because we're gonna need to use it at the end Make sure you paste it somewhere safe and uh, we're gonna use it later on. So our next step is to install something called NGINX. NGINX is a web server. This is the thing that's gonna allow us uh, a way to host something onto the dark web. So it's pretty cool, it's pretty fast and I'll show you how it works. So we're gonna copy the code under step eight here and we're gonna install that web server. Type Y to hit enter. So I'm gonna skip nine where we check the status. It should be working. And uh, we're gonna go to step number 10. I'm gonna copy this line of code. We're gonna edit another file. We're gonna hit enter. Now in that file, we, we're gonna uncomment uh, two lines of code here. So we're gonna uncomment where it says server token off. And we're gonna uncomment something where it says server name in redirect. Scroll down and look for those two items. So I found it right here where it says server token off. We wanna make sure we, right here, delete this hashtag and make sure it's lined up with this other code here. If it's not lined up with this other code, it's not going to work. With Python, it gets really weird when, when it comes to uh, lining up with other code. Just make sure, again, we just deleted that server token off the, the, the hashtag in front of it and we made sure we lined it up in front of this right here. Now we're going to do the same thing with server name in redirect. So server name in redir redirect is this line here. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure we delete that hashtag thing, but we're gonna also make sure it's lined up with the other ones. And under server token off, we're gonna type in something else here. So I'm gonna hit enter, and we're gonna go under it right now. And on step 12, it wants us to copy this line of code here and, and paste it. See under the server token off that we just uncommented right here, it wants us to copy this line of code and paste it under there. So port underscore in underscore redirect space off semicolon. So we're gonna copy this under the server token off. Make sure make sure it's lined up as well. And once once that's done, we're gonna hit control. We're gonna uh, press X. We're gonna press Y. Then we're gonna press enter. Then we're, we received that file successfully. Now we exited the nano. Now we're gonna restart our web server to NGINX. To do that, we're gonna copy this line of code here under step 14 and we're going to paste it right here hit enter all right so i have a typo i forgot to type the s for sudo so i'm going to redo that again i'm going to hit enter so we restarted our web services now we're pretty much done with installing uh, all the necessary stuff for the tor part now we're going to install something called a tor browser which is going to allow us to view stuff on the dark web so to do that i, I left a link to that part here so we're going to click on that right here right we're gonna click that link and scroll down. See where it says this line of code W get. We want to copy that code here. Just press this button on top where it says copy. We're gonna copy this line of code and we're gonna paste it onto the terminal and we're gonna hit enter. What this is gonna do is gonna install something called pi hyphen apps. This thing is gonna have everything we need to install uh Tor, but it, it has other stuff that you could you could uh install as well, but it also has a Tor Tor browser that we're looking for. Give it about a minute or so to install. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna jump back into our Raspberry Pi desktop. All right, so we're back in our Raspberry Pi desktop. Now, if it worked, you're gonna see something that says Pi Apps here, a new de desktop icon. Double click this desktop I icon, click on Execute. Now on top, we want all apps here. Then we're gonna scroll all the way, all the way down to the T's for Tor. So this is the Tor browser right here, this purple onion looking thing. We're gonna click on it. 
it should pop up for Tor installed. Click on install and let it let it do its thing. Now, if you see this here where it says install Tor successfully, now we could close that. Remember guys, this uh, Pi apps thing has a million different things you can install. I would recommend you use this to install any app for Raspberry Pi. We're gonna close this. We're gonna click on the Raspberry Pi icon on the top left. Now in internet, we should see the Tor browser. So click on the Tor browser. Now we finally, finally installed our Tor browser. This is what's gonna allow us to connect to the dark web or to the uh, Tor router. See right here, once you see this screen, all you have to do is uh, click on connect here and it's gonna establish a connection to the Tor networks. All right, so now it fully established a connection. Now we're fully connected to the dark web. We have a privately accessed browser here. So now we're gonna copy our Tor address that we that we copied earlier and we're gonna paste it onto this address here, then hit enter. All right, so if, if it worked, you, you should see the welcome to NGINX. So that means it's hosting our web page here. And uh, in a future video, I'm gonna show you how to edit all this right here. And uh, it's pretty simple. In this video, I just wanted to show you how to create a Raspberry Pi to our router, then install the Tor browser, then be able to connect, privately connect to a Tor, Tor network and uh, access the dark web. So if you guys like this video, please give me a like. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. I'm Rustin from RossmerTech.com and thank you guys for watching. Hey everyone, I just want to remind you that this video was for educational purposes only. I hope you've learned something new and interesting. But please, don't use any of the information in this video for malicious purposes. It's important to always use your knowledge and skills ethically and responsibly. Take care of yourself and stay safe. This is the Everyday Hacker, signing out.